Today we'll be making a flexible protective case for the Asus Zenfone V Live. When I got this phone, the cases were back ordered, so of course I decided to design my own. The first step is to identify all of the points that need to be accessible through the case and get those measured up using calipers. Next, I have used Fusion 360 to create a profile with an inside edge that's going to fit snugly against the sides of the phone. For the back, I've placed a cutout for the camera lens and added some fillets to mimic the curves of the phone. Sweeping that first profile around the back sketch creates an outer shape that's going to be slim and easy to grip. A few more sketch shapes get extruded through for all the access points, then I've chamfered those edges and added some custom support structures to make the cutouts print more cleanly. This all took several tries to get the tolerances right, so I'll show you some of those intermediate versions later on in the video. I've extruded a solid back plate but left a recess for this chainmail design. It's made from a primitive that's been rotated and copied a bunch of times to create that link pattern, then scaled and trimmed to fit into the frame. I'm printing this in Cheetah, which will make a case that's super tough, but flexible enough to pop onto the phone. The layer texture is going to help make it even more grippy, and the whole thing is thick enough to provide a bit of impact protection. The chainmail pattern takes on this really interesting wire wrap sort of texture through the printing process, and then the flat parts get a smooth, glossy sheen from the print bite. These support pieces take a bit of effort to remove and do need a bit of cleanup. Also, the hole for the headphone jack needs to be wider, so I'm using a wood burner and then the Dremel to extend that to a six millimeter diameter. The flexible filament had a little bit of trouble printing on the sides, so we're going to sand that plane a bit, and that's also going to make it soft and more comfortable to hold. So then I'm going to just go over everything with the heat gun to give it a final smooth finish. Now we have this super sturdy flexible cover which just snaps on at all the corners, grips the phone snugly, and the side buttons are easy to access, as are of course all the other ports. Then it just pops off the same way it goes on if you need to take it off. Let's take this design one step further and add some color to bring out that pattern. For this one, I added an intense blue to the bottom, red to the top, then blended them together towards the center and cleaned off all the excess so that the paint is only in the recessed areas. Then I tried that same technique using metallic copper and silver paints. And this one kind of has a steampunk vibe because up close those layers start to look like wire wrapped around and then crisscrossing behind the links. Once the paint is dry, it needs to be sealed, so I'm dabbing it in, wiping away the excess, and doing a second coat once that one's dry. So we've got a few color options now. Let's just jump back and take a look at the earlier versions of the design. The first one I stopped after about two layers because really I just needed to live tune the bed leveling. The second print showed that the cutouts were going to need supports and also that the side buttons and charging port access cutouts needed to be a little bit larger. I sanded those a bit just to get an idea of what the next iteration should look like. The fit was okay, but a little bit loose in some areas and a tad tight around the corners. So for the next version, I made a lot of little tweaks and also tried out the chainmail pattern. It still didn't fit correctly around the screen, so the next version I shrunk that profile down even more and revised the button access holes. I noticed that the increased size of the headphone port caused some issues because it was cut so close to the upper frame. The fit was improved around the corners and the buttons were accessible, but now there was too much of a gap below each port and still some gaping up above. Next, I added a little block below the ports. It wasn't quite big enough, so I made it taller and extended it all the way around the case. This improved the overall fit and filled the gaps below the ports. I was still having issues with the way the headphone hole was affecting the print quality of the frame above it, so I just printed it smaller and then widened it out in post-processing, and this worked a lot better. One other issue, the angle was a bit off for the upper frame for it to print correctly on the inside, so I modified the profile 
and printed just that part to make sure all the layers were bonding now and that nothing was trying to print into thin air. And then that one became the final version. So the case fits just right, the buttons and ports are accessible, and the phone is comfortable and grippy to hold. So I'm much less likely to drop it, but it's also got a better chance of surviving unscathed if something does happen. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe give it a thumbs up if you think this was a good solution. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon.